Hey church, today we see the bridge between the end of Numbers and the beginning of the book of Joshua. And in this reading plan, we are sort of bypassing the book of Deuteronomy, but feel free to read for additional context if you want to. The book of Numbers covered 39 years and closes with the Israelites poised near the banks of the Jordan River with the promised land in their sight. Their wandering in the desert has come to an end and the people are preparing for their next big move, the conquest of the land. So now in their 40th year, Israel has traveled a circuitous route through the desert, but not because they were following their leader. Quite the opposite was true. With failing faith, they had refused to obey God and to conquer Canaan, which was the geographical location of the promised land. And so they wandered. Finally, the new generation was ready cross the Jordan and possess the land. And having distinguished himself as a man of faith and courage, Joshua was chosen to be Moses' successor. In fact, get this, out of over a million people, Joshua and Caleb were the only two who left Egypt and entered the promised land. The only two. So as we move from Numbers to the book of Joshua, know this. Joshua was committed to to obeying God, and most simply put, this book is about obedience. Whether conquering enemies or settling the land, God's people were required to do it God's way. So with that background established, I'd like to quickly draw your eyes to Joshua chapter 2, the story of Rahab and the spies. Go ahead and hit pause and read this chapter first if you haven't, Joshua chapter 2. The, fu- the first question you may have when you read this, is why did Joshua send the spies secretly? As far as he knew, he would be attacking a heavily fortified city using conventional warfare tactics. He needed strategic information about the city for the upcoming battle. But he also knew that this might draw criticism from other leaders. After all, the last time spies were sent was in Numbers 13, and the report they brought brought back caused all kinds of problems. So while he didn't want to move ahead without information, he also didn't want to cause the people to stumble and question um, his wisdom and ability to lead the nation. Second question, why would the spies stop at the house of Rahab, a prostitute? Well, first, it was a good place to gather info and have no questions asked of them. Second, Rahab's house was in an ideal location for a quick escape because it was actually built into the city wall. Third, God directed the spies to Rahab's house because he knew her heart was open to him and that she would be open to him and that she would be instrumental in the Israelite victory over Jericho. See, God often uses people with simple faith to accomplish his great purposes no matter what kind of past they have had or how significant they seem to be. Here's the key lesson today. Rahab did not allow her past to keep her from the new role God had for her. Many would assume that Rahab, a pagan, a Canaanite, and a prostitute would never be interested in God. Yet Rahab was willing to risk everything she had for a God she barely knew. We must not gauge a person's interest in God by his or her background, by their lifestyle, or their appearance. And to those of you watching right now who feel distant from God, or you've messed up too much, or he couldn't possibly want anything to do with you, you got to know he loves you. Turn to him, confess your sins, surrender, and call on the name of Jesus, and see what happens. Peace be with you.